Gentlemen, and welcome back to another screencast by your teacher, Mr. Stano. And today we're going to go into tornadoes. We finished off with hurricanes a little while back and moving on to our other friendly low pressure systems. Tornadoes are nothing more, like I said, than low pressure systems. They're going to be forming when we have that warm, moist air coming up from near the Gulf, uh, colliding with cold continental polar air that comes down from Canada or moves southward from Canada. They produce the typical funnel-shaped clouds that most people, uh, I guess, associate with tornadoes. But the winds also are blowing counterclockwise. Remember, low-pressure systems, we're going to have counterclockwise winds. And these winds could be in excess of about 300 to 350 miles per hour, so extremely fast winds. Uh, the center of that tornado is known as a vortex. And the problem with tornadoes is that destruction is very sudden. They can come down and pretty much collect, I wouldn't say, at almost any time, and they're very unpredictable, which makes tornadoes a lot potentially more deadly than hurricanes. Hurricanes we can track coming from off the coast of Africa and moving all the way through into the United States and then uh, northward. Tornado is a little bit harder to predict. This is known as Tornado Alley right here. Tornado Alley is pretty much this section of the United States right here where we have this continental polar air moving down from here, colliding with this maritime tropical air from here. So this right here, because we always have this constant collision of these two extremely different air masses right here, are going to lend themselves to conditions of tornadoes. Okay, and once again, this is very simple, uh, similar to what I just showed. So we have that continental polar air mass coming from Canada. Remember that cold, dry air mass colliding with that warm, moist air from Gulf of Mexico. Because there is such a difference in temperature and humidity, it allows for a pretty intense thunderstorm, an extremely unstable air mass. That cold air comes in, the warm air goes up and over it, unstable air, extreme low pressure associated with it. What we end up seeing is from the side view, we have the base of the cloud right here, and then this right here, this low pressure system. Notice the counterclockwise movement and how this moves roughly 500 to 2,000 feet tall depending on the system itself. Here's the funnel cloud right here. We can see it beginning to lower down in this region. So we have this low pressure, this system right here, the spiraling air, eventually moving it and making its way towards the ground. A couple more pictures of these funnel clouds that we typically see with tornadoes. Okay, this is uh, Miami. I had a uh, tornado at one point. Uh, here's the tornado in the background of these people. So taking a picture, hanging out, and what do we see? A little tornado. We have tornadoes that sometimes form over water. These are known as water spouts. You can see that drawing up this water right here. It's pretty cool looking. But this right here, interestingly enough, is a tornado path. And you can actually trace path as it moves through. So notice the tornadoes, how locally they can change directions relatively quickly and that everything over here is okay. Path of destruction, everything's fine over here. So tornadoes, unpredictable. We don't know when they're going to happen, but very localized damage. It's not like hurricanes where they cause damage on, on town-wide, city-wide, state-wide damage. Tornadoes, very localized, but unpredictable. Here's some tornado damage right here. Once again, you can see how this tornado moved right through. So fortunately, these houses are okay here, here. Uh, it looks like pretty, pretty much a little damage maybe from winds and debris, but these houses right here, not good. Okay, another aerial view of some tornado damage. You can see this tornado came through, kind of lingered in this region and went through this way. So you can see some damage right here and here, uh, probably uh, from debris, some high winds. You can see it might have moved across a little differently or hung out in this area a little bit more, but pretty much 
whole rows of houses just fine, or blocks of houses. What we use to measure the uh, strength of tornadoes or classify them is known as the Fujita scale. And this is by works by assessing damage, how much damage the tornadoes um, cause. So you can see here, everything from light tree branches broken, F0, all the way up to steel structures highly damaged and everything in between. So we, based on the damage and the approximate wind speeds, we can get a scale. Here's some more tornado damage. You can see houses completely ripped off their foundation. Nothing left. Some more. Some things that you need to do in case of a tornado, which occasionally that we do have from very small and quick tornadoes passing through Long Island. Uh, a few years back, I believe it was through uh, Brentwood, a town in Suffolk County, where they had a small tornado touchdown. Lasted a very brief period of time, but it, it did happen. So some things that may happen, you want to go to the basement or storm cellar. As tornadoes come over, basically you want to be in the lowest point possible. You also want to be protected as much as possible. So we want to stay from windows and doors and any exterior walls where debris can come flying through. Like I said, seek the lowest place, go in a ditch, ravine, and you want to keep your arms over your head to protect from anything hitting your head. You do not want to stay in your car. Cars can be lifted up, moved, flipped. So you want to stay away from cars. Instead, you would rather lie flat on the ground. You want to, basically, you're trying to avoid debris. Uh, worst state, uh, tornado ever, or one of the worst, was a tri-state tornado in 1925, where we had about 700 people dead and uh, 2,000 injured. So quite a, quite a bit of damage there. Some differences between hurricanes and tornadoes, since we've gone over both. Hurricanes are definitely a lot larger than tornadoes. We're talking about things going hundreds of miles versus very localized under a mile in some cases. Uh, hurricanes, we watch them, we track them, we know when they're forming, we can approximate tracks how long they're going to last for. Tornadoes, we cannot do that. Hurricanes, they basically lose energy once they get over land, where tornadoes are pretty much forming over land. And, of course, the tornado winds are going to be much faster, but like I said, a lot more localized. And that's pretty much it. That is the end of hurricanes, tornadoes, our extreme weather, and pretty much the end of all of our meteorology notes at this point. So I hope you enjoyed all that. And uh, if you have anything else, any questions, you can always go back, watch the older screencasts, or just ask us in class. Have a good day. Take care. Goodbye.